Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Now, in every one of our mill programs, uh, at some point we'll be sending our tools or our machine table home. We might do this at the end of our program or sometimes even before a tool change. Understanding exactly how our G53 and G28 codes work uh, can really make the life of our operators easier. Now, misunderstanding how these codes work, however, can add a lot of cycle time to our programs or even cause us some unwanted surprises. Well, let's jump right in and take a look at our G53 and G28 commands. As operators and programmers, we need to understand um, how both of these codes work to send our tool or table back to our home positions. Now, these codes behave slightly differently on a lathe. Uh, so we've split up this tip into two versions, a mill version and a lathe version. So be sure to check out the lathe version of this video. Right now, I am at machine zero. This is our home position. Now, why do we call it our home position? Well, because that's where our home switches are. Each morning when you come in and you press power up restart, each axis moves until precision home switches are triggered. Now, this is typically the back right corner of travel on Haas mills. Our machine zero is a useful reference position because it never changes. No matter what tool or work offsets we've, uh, we've entered, home is always home. If at the end of our programs we want to move our Z up and out of the way and then position our vise in front of the door for our operator, we can do that. Now to do this safely, we'll want to move these axes one at a time. Z first and then the X and Y. Now right off the bat we're going to show you how to use the G53 method. And I've got the program loaded up right here. In our program we've called up a Tool 1, T1M6, and then we do our machining. Okay, so the machining's all done. G53, G0, G90, Z0. That sends our Z all the way to our home position. Now that the tool's out of the way, we're going to command a G53, G0, G90, Y0, X minus 20. I knew I wanted to position the table to G53, Y0, X minus 20 uh, because I had jogged the table where I wanted it and then looked at my machine position screen and recorded the values. Our machine position is our G53, always. Now G53 is our non-modal machine coordinate selection, non-modal. This means that the G53 only affects the lines of code that it is called out on. So if we want to make a move based on the machine home position, we need to call out that G53 on each and every line. Now as soon as we pass that G53 line, the machine is going to return to whatever work coordinate system we happen to have been in, um, G54 in our case. Now I call out a G0 and a G90 on each of my G53 lines, but I just do this for, uh, for clarity and for safety. So, so that's pretty much it for G53. It is really straightforward, really easy to use to send your tool or your table back to the home position. Oh, I, I do have one more thing I'd like to say about G53 that some of you might find useful. On some of our machine models, like uh, UMC or our GR gantry router machines, we actually have a little bit of extra space above our G53 Z0 locations. Now this can be uh, really useful on a UMC machine you might have two and a half inches of travel above G53 Z0, allowing us to command a G53 G0 Z 2.5. Likewise, on a GR uh, gantry router machine, we might have four inches of extra travel above that tool change location. If you aren't sure what the maximum G53 Z position is that you can, that you can reach with your particular machine, just jog all the way to the top of your Z travel and look at your machine position. Whatever that Z value is, that's the maximum um, G53 position you can reach on your particular machine. If G53 XYZ is like driving straight home after work, then using a G28 XYZ is like stopping off for milk on your way home. <laughs> now I'm serious, while G53 and G28 both get you to your home position eventually, they do it in very different ways. When you command one or more axes home with a G28, the machine's not going to move directly to those home positions. It's going to move to the X, Y, or Z locations in the current work coordinate system first on its way to home. So check this out. 
I've got, a, I've got a block loaded up here, and my zero is in the front left corner. If from within a program I were to command a G28 um, X0, Y0, Z0, my tool is going to move rapid right to this top left corner, because that's my G54 X, Y0. After it's done that, it will then wrap it to the home position. So again, we do not use a G28 command in G90 absolute mode. That's the wrong way to use it. If you were to command uh, that from MDI, you'd probably crash your machine. We want to only use a G28 in G91 incremental mode. Now this is a really misunderstood concept, and one of the reasons uh, we usually push people towards the G53 method. If you use the G28 method with a G91, be sure to put the machine back in G90 absolute mode when you are done. Now, just because we can send our tool back to the Z home position before a tool change, doesn't mean that we should do this. Take a look at this program. It's fairly typical. We see it all the time, but it wastes a lot of cycle time. The program turns off the coolant, then moves the tool to machine Z0, and then it stops the spindle before performing a tool change. At the end of the program, it does the same thing and then moves the table forward for the operator. This program is wasting time with each line. A better way to program this would be to remove these lines of code altogether. With these commands gone, the control is gonna automatically and simultaneously turn off the coolant, move to the tool change position, and stop the spindle. It does these things all at the same time instead of waiting for each line to be completed. So we move those M5s, M9s, and those um, zero return moves before tool changes. You'll save yourself a lot of time. We give out this tip so often because it's so helpful uh, in saving cycle time. Well, that's it for this Haas tip of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the, to the Haas YouTube channel for more tips. And don't forget to stop and pick up your milk on the way home.